Here's a look at Grandfather Oak in all his glory without any leaves. As you can see, he is indeed a grand old tree. It won't be too long before those leaves will be back. Still a few months away, however. But for today, we're back on the MT and me, ready to get back on Pearl and do a little more work while the weather holds out. Welcome back, my nobies. Thanks for joining us again. Remember in our last video, we spent uh, most of our time swapping out brand new spark plug wires. We have these beautiful blue, almost Mopar blue wires. In fact, we call them Fopar blue. Fopar. I like that. So anyway, they're blue. They almost match the Mopar color. I love them. And they're here to stay. But you may also remember that I told you I had ordered spark plugs and they were running a little late. And they'd probably get here mm, about the time I finished the video. Well, sure enough, two days later, we get our Autolite 65s here. Brand new spark plugs, exact replacement for what is already in Pearl's 360 engine. So today we're going to swap them out. And as an added bonus, I also got something in that I really didn't expect. A brand new ignition coil. So, we're going to swap this one for the old one. And once again, it should be an exact replacement as well. Plus, we're going to get under the hood and do a little measuring for a new battery. And see what we need to do to build a tray to hold a battery. Because... I think the one there has some problems right now. So, you stick around. It's going to be a, a fun excursion here for the next few minutes, anyway, on the MT and me. So, we're going to start with this right back spark plug. It's number seven or number eight in the firing order, I think. Not that that really matters at this point. We're going to pull this brand new faux par blue boot off of it and see if we can get it out of there. I don't think I put these back in too terribly snug. Although I did want them snug enough in case I did have to run the engine with them. But that's apparently not the case. Just keep the wrench on until you get the plugs completely out. That's the proper way to do it anyway. can't actually turn it with my fingers, just not much at a time. And for those of you not familiar with spark plugs, they are rather finely threaded because they have to hold a lot of pressure inside a cylinder. But I got it. Now once again, these old plugs are not in really bad shape, but they are old. And we have an exact replacement. So, we're gonna put these in. Hang on to the old ones. Because you just never know when you might need one. There it is. We've got a brand new boot to go on it. Sure, 
lower down on it firmly. And there. That's one cylinder down, seven more to go. And I'm not going to make you sit through all seven of the others because, well, it's just not that exciting of a job, is it? So, I'm going to take care of the rest of these plugs, and then we'll see about changing the coil. Okay, all the plugs have been changed out. Got my wiring neatly organized. Got the old plugs in the new boxes, so we're going to... Mark them old, as if uh, <laughs> opening the box you couldn't tell that, but you know, that'll keep me from opening the box. All right. Now, the caveat on all that is it took a little longer than I thought it was going to. It's getting dark, and the weather's starting to get a little bit threatening, so I think I'm going to stop where I am today. We will uh, put the coil on tomorrow. And then the next step is going to be going back out under the hood to the area where the battery goes and figure out what kind of platform we need to make for a battery to sit on. Because we're about to put a battery in this old girl, okay? But all that's coming up later here on the MT and Me. Well, as you can see, it's not the best day to get out and work on Pearl. It's been raining, and raining hard for all of the afternoon, and it's supposed to continue for most of the evening, maybe ending sometime late tonight. So no work on Pearl today, maybe tomorrow. Well, all right, another day is upon us. The rain has quit. Everything's a little wet, but at least it's not raining anymore. It's just kind of cloudy and cool. But the fact is, we're back out here in Pearl, and we are ready to see about installing a brand new ignition coil to go with those new spark plugs and new spark plug wires. With the addition of this, that'll pretty well give us a completely new ignition system on the engine itself. Now there's still a few peripherals we need to check out as far as the rest of the wiring goes to be sure it works, but we'll be getting to that. So uh, anyway, let's get some coil work doing, huh? So basically we have a couple of wires to get off the old coil and then one bolt here that's holding the, uh, well, it's kind of a, a, a frame, a mounting that hangs onto the coil that actually sets it in place. Um, so I don't think this is going to be rocket science. And I hope those aren't famous last words. Let's see if we can get the bolts off first. red wire. It goes on the positive terminal. That's easy to remember. Okay, I'm not going to get to it with that. Let's try the socket. That is the wrong size. Maybe if I First of all, disconnected. Go ahead and take the uh, frame loose. It'll be easier to get. Oh yeah, that's going to make it much easier. See there? I have to do 
now let's just get the right end of the wrench. And that wire, which is actually black and green, maybe? Black and yellow, black and green. Black with a stripe of something else. Anyway, it goes to the negative terminal. And this little frame, which is really all bungled up, is uh, just held on with a set screw. Let's see if we can loosen it. Enough to slide it off slide the new one in. And there we have one old ignition coil, which may or may not still be good. It was made in Canada. Thank you, Canada, for your years of service. Uh, the new one, <laughs> pretty sure it came from China. Because that's just where everything comes from now. Let's see if I still have the right size wrench. And of course, I do not. Wouldn't you know it? Well, tell you what. Uh, we got positive, we got negative. This thing came completely apart on me. Which means I've got to keep pressure on it while I uh, try to screw it back together. I think that'll be snug enough. Now all we need is the uh, right wrench for this coil. And I'll bet I can find it just like that. Wow, it worked. <laughs> now, let's see if I got the right size. Absolutely. Okay. Now we put the coil back where we found it. More or less. And there, I think we've completed the installation of our new ignition coil. We've got new spark plug wires, new spark plugs. And like we said earlier, we've checked out the distributor. I think it's okay. Might go in and look at the uh, rotor and points again in it a little later on. But we're going to see how she runs with things just the way they are. But I tell you this. She's not going to run at all without a battery. And that's something we want to do next. Is go back outside, get under the hood, and look at the spot where the battery has to be. Because we're going to need some sort of uh, battery holder fabricated before we get a battery in there. So let's go see what that looks like. 
Well, once again, we find ourselves running out of light and with a little bit of threatening weather to the south. We got some cloud banks coming in. So let's see if we can't get some measurements here. Uh, as you can see, this is the area where the battery goes under the hood. And as you can further see, the original platform is in pretty sad shape. It's rusted out completely. Uh, what's left there is in sad condition. This uh, securing handle is also in pretty bad shape. Mainly because I'm not sure I can even get the nuts loose to get this thing out. If I can, I can clean it up and use it again. Uh, we'll just have to check that a little bit later on. The main thing is here to find out how much room I have to put a battery. Now, according to my research, uh, Pearl is designed to use uh, a number 24 battery. Uh, batteries are numbered according to their size and dimensions uh, and their purpose and their voltage and whether the posts are on the top or on the sides. is a real elaborate system. Uh, Pearl's battery would be a 24, but a 35 will also work. <laughs> that's, that's what I found out. But the original battery was a 24. And I can't, off the top of my head, quote the dimensions of that battery. But let's see what kind of dimensions I have here to work with. From the uh, inside of the fender wall to the uh, uh, voltage, uh, the battery isolator, uh, is about 13 inches. The isolator is, of course, what separates this battery up front, the engine battery, from the battery back in the motorhome that powers all the accessories back there. Uh, it allows the alternator of the vehicle to charge both batteries and keep them charged, but it will prevent either battery from draining the other one so that you always have a battery with a charge in it. That's a good thing. So anyway, the isolator is important. It's got to stay. Uh, 13 inches, which means I don't want to get too close to it, so maybe, maybe a foot from side to side that I have to work with. Uh, front to back, well, first of all, let's just measure the distance between these uh, two upright holders. And that's right at seven, seven and a quarter inches. I would assume most batteries will fit in that because this is, or at least a 25 ought to, uh, because this is designed to hold that battery, so we're going to say maybe seven inches depth. That'll work, which means my tray can be a little bit bigger, okay? And as far as top to bottom clearance, I'm going to measure from this rusted metal upwards. And getting near the front, I would say nine inches total maximum. More like seven and a half to eight, uh, because I'm going to have to give up a little bit of space because of whatever I put down there as a platform, and then add the height of the battery itself. And of course, you don't want it contacting anything on uh, the hood whenever the hood is closed. So seven, seven and a half inches, eight maximum, as far as that measurement goes. Um, so I've got twelve by seven by seven to eight to work with. Uh, the main thing there is a 12 by seven or a 12 by eight piece of something to go down here and secure it in place to uh, fasten this battery down. Now I've got solid construction here as far as the body of the vehicle that I can screw into. So if I get a, a small piece of wood and maybe put a rubber mat on it, that would work. Maybe I can find some sort of porous uh, ventilated plastic piece and uh, rubberize it to put a little cushion on the battery to set it on. Just got to check around here and see what I have and see what I can come up with. And also get back online and start comparing battery dimensions so that we can go ahead and order a battery. Then we'll get out here in the meantime while the battery's coming and, uh, and get this platform made so that when it gets here we can pop it into Pearl and start doing some electrical testing. All of that is going to come later. In the meantime, I've got my work cut out for me, my homework, finding something to make a battery platform with. We'll do that next time we're together here on the MT and me. And who knows? I'll find something else to work on too. I usually do. 
Thanks for coming along for the ride this time around. I really appreciate you watching and your support and staying with us each and every week. We're in our third year. Can you believe it? Over 100 videos and going strong here uh, as we restore this beautiful mobile traveler motorhome. Be sure to join me again next week. And we'll do some more. In the meantime, if you'd like to help, you can buy me a coffee. There's a link below to do that. And you can contribute to the Pearl Restoration Fund by doing that. There's also a link to themtandme.com where you'll find a lot of background information on the Mobile Traveler Company and the various models of DMT, including Pearl. In fact, you'll find some pictures on there that look just like her, which is so cool, I think, so cool. And plenty of other talking about how she's put together, what the construction's like and uh, just kind of the history of the company. And we also have the uh, some of the official documentation that we found with Pearl whenever we bought her, too. That's all on the mtandme.com. Be sure to check it out. You can also go to the videos there, too. Most of them, anyway, are working on getting them all linked up. The rest of them, all the videos, are right here on YouTube in case you'll go back and want to check them out. Thanks for checking this one out. Give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Be sure to Share and subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, as always, thank you so much for your support, my homies. We'll be back again soon. Till then, I'm Russ. Thanks for watching. We'll talk later.